All right, so this is part two of the package design critique. Let's get back into it. All right, now it's time to check out what Monica has done. Monica, what do you have for us? The product that I've chosen is Valbona Italian sauce. Here, ethnic foods aren't really a big deal, so originally I had chosen a different, quite sophisticated packaging, but after playing uh, for a couple of days with it, I realized that it may not actually be considered ethnic, so I had to move to my second favorite choice, which was the sauce. So this was a great opportunity for me to delve into a new fresh market and to note what features of the packaging caught my attention. So I chose the sauce for its minimalistic straight to the point design, which in my opinion is the main reason why shelf presence is so distinct com in comparison with other brands that use extensive imagery and a lot of color. From the packaging itself, you can see that it is very important to have an Italian connection, which I believe I can make more efficient. Uh, I passed the product around a couple of people without giving them any context and honestly some of them thought that the leaves in front uh, le represent the colors of the ingredients that were used to make the sauce like tomato for red and olive or basil for green. This definitely has to be improved in my opinion. One more thing that really really bothered me when I was looking at the package in the store is that it uses two labels. The first one, the primary one that carries the main design and the second one that has caloric values in the back. However, caloric values are also displayed on the side right here and we have repetitive information about address and whatever government is requiring on the other side of the main label. I don't know why this was what they chose, but I definitely am going to be fixing this. Um, we are not allowed to wear too far from the brand and its colors, which is not going to be a problem to me. Uh, however, the good thing about it is that we do not have a set imaginary budget for the print. So what I'm going to do to appeal to a higher clientele, um, I'm thinking of using a matte label and perhaps adding a glossy element or accent of some sort. I'm really excited about it. Let's get to work. Okay, fantastic. Now let's take a look at the original design. Okay, so I see it's bruschetta time. So the brand itself is Vabonia, the Bona, and it's Ale Olive e Pomodori. And I don't even know what that means, but okay. Uh, obviously it's Italian because the colors of Italy are there, the green, the white, and the red. I think those are not necessarily ingredient colors, Monica, but I think it's really representative of the country. So the green, white, and red is repeated down below. Let's take a look at some of the other design or some other parts of this. You've chosen a fantastic product to, to rebrand because if you look in the aisle for premium olive oil and olive um, related products, there's a lot of room for us to improve here. Fantastico. Let's take a look at the design you came up with, Monica. Mmm. Okay. Okay, let's jump back into it. There's a couple things I noticed right away. And the Art Center alumni, the Art Center graduate in me says, you need to use a sharper X-Acto knife because we got some problems with the edging of the top of the boot of the Italy part. So this here, I'm gonna call you out. That's a five yard penalty foul right there. Get a really sharp knife. It seemed like you had a really great start here and then towards this area here, you fumbled it a little bit, okay? There's a couple other things I'm just not feeling here. I looked at the original, I look at this. I think we made changes, but I don't know how far we've moved us up the market. The boot illustration feels really crude to me, like it's poorly drawn vector artwork. And I think we have to stay away from the cliches of communicating Italy. I think we know this is an Italian spread, and I think we can get into things that go beyond that. And I think there's lots of examples. If you go to a place like Italy, you'll see there's a lot of Italian related products that are imported from Italy, but they don't scream at you. It's not like a Mario from Mario Kart is standing there. It's a, it's a me, a Mario. You don't see that. So I think showing the boot, it's a little cliche for me. I think we could use something else. And honestly, I think if you've chosen 
a clean serif typeface and you use some interesting materials in print and added a little element like a stamp that says imported from Italy or something so that it feels like it's traveled somewhere and there's a chance for you to tell a little bit of a story and transport somebody to some other place. When we think of olive oil and olives, we naturally think of Italy, so that's already going well for it. I think you need to just play into that a little bit. Otherwise, there's not a lot for me to critique in this at all. Um, maybe I would have just changed this all to English, but otherwise it doesn't really matter. I assume you can read this. I don't know what it says. Again, I think you could have benefited from a little bit more premium packaging. We talked about um, maybe a seal that you have to break, um, maybe a paper that has some fibers in it, something that feels a little bit more rustic. You can try doing something where the edge is rough, like hand torn. I think that could look really good as if a human being made it. I think you can try, and you, you've talked about this in your video, where there are two labels. I've seen this done really well before too, so I'm just gonna draw the jar. You could try to do a label that's here and another label that's there. And there are two different kinds of paper, two different materials, and they're attached together. I think that could look really good. So this one could have like that feeling of it going through customs, product of Italy, and then it could just, you can have all the caloric information. And then on this side, maybe it's kind of hand cut and put together. And then this is your lid here. Sorry for using this really bright red color, but I think you get the idea there. And don't be afraid to use engravings of olives to show the ingredients itself. So again, I, I could do something here. I probably wouldn't put it right next to that circle, but you know, there's maybe a crosshatch engraving and you see the leaf, something like that. And the rest of the product information is over here. I think just with a little bit of effort there, a little extra energy, we could have made this really, really good. I'm gonna score you right now. I feel like I understood Chris's point of view better and what is expected of us, which is super useful for the upcoming challenges. And I will definitely be putting more focus and effort to the visual side of the concept. Other than that, I'm really happy with the critique. I appreciate that our opinions differ regarding the packaging. There is a lot of room to improve and uh, I'm more than excited to see what's next. Okay, so as you can see, this has been a long process for us. Sun's going down on us, but that's not gonna diminish my spirit and enthusiasm for our very next person, Rhea Hardcastle. Rhea, what do you have for us? We have two and a half weeks to complete this design challenge and I am scrambling because it is Sunday and this project is due tonight at midnight. The product that I chose is Bragg's apple cider vinegar. And what is it for? Bragg's apple cider vinegar is used in the kitchen and it can also be used um, for its health benefits, just taken in um, water diluted. So my two biggest challenges for this project are mainly my time constraint. Um, as I said, I am filming this on Sunday and this project is due tonight at midnight. So um, I am on a huge time crunch, but I'm used to just going full throttle um, and diving into projects like this and saving them for the last minute because my design process is usually that um, I just kind of like meditate and percolate and meditate and just allow my creative mind to digest exactly what I do, what I want to do. Um, and right now I have a very clear vision of exactly what I want to do with this product. So I know that everything is going to work out just fine in terms of actual technical skill when it comes to type and illustrations, um, I still have a lot to learn. I really consider myself more of a creative director, UX designer, web designer, and brand strategist, which are very needed in the design field, but are much more like big picture mentality skills than like actual technical skills. So I'm going to have to lean on outsourcing for this one and um, 
even though we were encouraged to use original designs, um, I see myself much more as like a curatorial type designer. So um, though this is this may be breaking the rules, this is just how I work as a designer. And if I get kicked off the show for using other people's designs, oh well, I'm paying for the extended license if I do use anybody else's designs. So in terms of legal terms, I don't think this is illegal, but um, I do understand if this gets me kicked off the show. Um, but this is just how I work as a designer. I understand my strengths and I understand my weaknesses. And in the areas that I know I'm, that I'm weak, I can always just lean on other designers, which is something that Chris talks about. And he says that he's had students, his students who practice this way. So I'm just gonna not worry about it and hope that everything goes well. All right, Tria, thank you for that explanation. Let's look at the original package for this apple cider vinegar. Woo, okay. Patricia Bragg, she's got a PhD. Wow, she's a pioneer health crusader. Ooh, and then Paul Bragg. Wow. So this is a husband and wife or brother sister team here. Very smart people. Bragg, I get it. And it's nice ribbon. There's a, like an old timey orange, what's that citrus packaging kind of vibe that I'm getting from this. It's, it's a throwback and even in the grid and the color palette, there's something really cool about it. And what's important here is I'm pulling out that it's organic apple cider vinegar. And those are really important parts to this. With the mother, the mother, what is the mother? So it turns out the mother is this strand-like chain of protein enzyme molecules that mean something to people that are really into this kind of stuff. It's unpasteurized too, which means it has been heated up so it could hurt you. <laughs> okay, let's take a look at the back. Oh, and they're health crusaders too, I get it. Now that we've taken a look at the original packaging, let's take a look at what Rhea came up with. Okay, this is a beautiful mock-up. And you've heard me say this before, mock-ups can make or break your presentation. And this is the fantastic use of mock-up. I'm assuming this is not something that you photograph. It looks amazing, it doesn't matter to me. It's the fact that you pick the right kind of shape and the lighting and then you design the rest. All right, so let's get into the critique. Let me jump in. Okay, here we go. There's some issues of hierarchy and integration. Right now it feels like you don't love the things on the bottom. You've cut them out literally from your design and there's, there's not a lot of integration there. And not having seen the original package before and now seeing it, I understand that there's a whole story between these two let's just assume they're husband and wife, not brother and sister. Uh, this team of doctors who are really concerned about your health and they call out organic and they call out certain aspects that I think we're losing in the translation of this into this design. Now, if I didn't know any better, if I looked at this, I would say overall, it's a very appealing design. It, it looks kind of appropriate for this market, but then the hierarchy and the integration and the storytelling is all lost on me right now. There's a couple things that we're gonna dive into and I'm gonna get really nitpicky with you. I love the fact that you included photography or illustration, I can't tell what this is. One problem I have with this design is, I cannot tell that's an apple. And usually you can tell something is an apple because of that little divot at the top and you see the stem or something and that's how you know it's an apple. So this is apple cider vinegar. It's really important for you to communicate that otherwise why have these elements in here? This could easily be some other kind of fruit and I don't know what fruit. Okay, help me out there. And I think it's interesting that you're using the same piece of fruit and you're replicating on two sides to kind of anchor the design, but you're taking up really important real estate. I would have loved to actually see a really beautiful illustration from you with Mr. and Mrs. Bragg or the Bragg brothers and sisters, I don't know, talking about their family history and tradition to make this a throwback design, but to update it for contemporary use. I think because you have that history that was established in 1912, you could, you could tap into that. Many brands don't have this, so you have to look at the strengths of the original brand and utilize that. I can see those kinds of drawings that you would associate in a Sears Roebuck catalog and integrating into there, like you're going into the local grocer that's a very small mom and pop operation. You're like, give me some of that special Bragg apple cider vinegar, that organic raw and filtered stuff with the mother, okay? I think there's some hierarchy issues here. The EST 1912 established in 1912 is important, but I don't think it supersedes everything else. I think you could have easily replaced this with organic on top 
organic apple cider, and you could do EST 1912 to flank the apple cider vinegar. I didn't see this word mark as part of the original packaging, so I assume you designed this, so let me critique that part of it now. Let me hide this, add a layer, get back into it. <coughs> the apple cider vinegar. Typically when you're do doing lettering like this, you want to eliminate dead space. And by creating these flourishes for the V and the R, you're actually trapping space in these areas here. That's not necessarily a good thing. So what I would do, I would suggest you do, is to eliminate the flourishes from the V, bring the apple cider, the baseline, closer to the vinegar, and then use the flourishes to fill in the dead space around it. Generally speaking, we don't do it this way. Next thing up, something is funny with the way that the word C looks. The C reads awkward because you've truncated the bottom and completing the end of the bowl of the C. I would have preferred you do something that is more circular in nature and not try to do that. I get why you did it, because you wanna close up the letter spacing and you don't have to deal with the negative space in between the, the bowl of the C, the open, open counter, and the I, but mm, it's looking really strange right now, okay? So we don't wanna, I, I think the flourishes that you added actually hurt the lockup that you're creating. I think you could have easily used some kind of old timey box here some of these decorative boxes that you see in Victorian design and play around with that. Um, I'm not good at that kind of stuff, but maybe there's something you could have added to anchor this design together and embed the word organic up here and tighten up this lockup somehow. And for sure, the fact that you divorced the Bragg logo and brand away from this, I think it's hurting your design. Okay, so here's my, well, a couple other things too. I don't love that you did this flush, force justified type on your, on your informational bits, I think this would've worked better just as a rag. And the reason why is you'll see these rivers that are created with these random spacing just to meet the column. We don't wanna do that, okay? Okay, so in summary, I think from first glance, this looks like a very professional design. It looks like it's on brand and that it is more upscale. But when I see the original design, there's some really beautiful things about the original design. I think we're losing the story the story that they can claim and only they can claim. So if you were to do this for them, I think they would have a hard time as a client saying, you just threw out 100 years of history with our company, that you've lost some of the history, that there were health crusaders since 1912. That's an important piece of information. I think it needs to translate into this design. You have the real estate for it. You just need to be more economical in how you use the components that you have. Okay, now it's time for me to grade your package design. The entire time I was like, yep, <laughs> yep, <laughs> yep, well, yeah. Um, I think a lot of the feedback that I got is stuff that I've heard before, but that isn't like ingrained in me that um, as I'm going through my design process, I already know to not do certain things that I did, um, especially with type. Um, I know Chris is just like a, the like Marine Corps Sergeant F like equivalent of like the type connoisseur. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like he's very nitpicky and, and he has a very strong understanding of how type needs to work, which is awesome because I feel like that's one of my weak points. Um, so like the fact that I did like the force justified type, I didn't even think about that. In my mind, I'm like, oh, type is supposed to be in a box and this looks good. And um, yeah, so as far as all the feedback goes, I, I totally agree, I hear it. Honestly, what I was thinking was like, I'm just so grateful for this experience. Um, I have never had a graphic design teacher or or a teacher in design who's actually like sat down and taken the time to like critique one of my pieces and mark it up like this so i just feel so incredibly privileged to be a part of this experience and my mind's just kind of boggled right now because it's just like oh my gosh <laughs> this is like one of the designers who i have a lot of admir admiration for who is looking at my work and giving me feedback and the fact that he said it's professional 
um, looking on first glance and that I chose a good mock-up, even if that was the only positive feedback that I got, I'm still just like, yay, <laughs> I did something right. <laughs> so <laughs> that's good. We're in the home stretch. Tosin, what do you have for us? Before going into the store, I had never heard of this before. I had never seen it, never tried it. But I went in looking for a product that I would easily be able to identify some problems with. A product that I like, or like in instinctively knew like a few solutions to the problem the product had, right? Okay, so I found this. And the big thing um, was that it was kind of lost in the shelf. Aside from the fact that there was a lot of it on the shelf, there wasn't really anything that would make me look at it on the shelves. So in a nutshell, I'm going to try and make this more attractive, like on the shelf. That's the first thing. And also make it easier to understand exactly what the product is just by looking at it. I've sketched here and I'm just trying to comp what I've sketched. Um, and the first thing I'm just doing is throwing on the logo. Already the challenge I'm having is we can't veer too far from the brand's existing colors. Um, and yeah, there's <laughs> color wise, this isn't saying a lot, but I'm hoping that I can play with like the greens, yellow and red to come up with something that's um, exciting and appealing. Okay, Tosin, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the original packaging. Okay, so this comes in an oddly shaped tub. It reminds me very much of those monitor wipes or baby wipes, and that's not just sending me down the appetizing train, okay? There's a lot going on here, but there's um, a photograph of a bunch of mangoes, and it always says it's unpeeled, that doesn't mean it's uncut. So pickles de mango, uh, this is a product of India, I believe, and trade pip mark. So pip is the brand, and it stands for Patringa International Panipat, P-I-P. Okay, mango unpeeled pickle, pickles de mango. I think it's exactly the same, isn't it? Okay, all right. Not a great looking package. From afar, it could look like limes, it could look like a lot of different things, or cantaloupe, or melon. It's all over the place. And usually products like this, I think it needs a whole different package. Let's see what Tosin came up with. Okay. So I think Tosin kept the spirit of the original packaging. She reduced a lot of the clutter down into just showing you a mango, I think. It almost looks like an avocado, the way it's cut and presented like that. Um, then there's some kind of decorative elements around the center ellipse that does have an Indian vibe to it and some kind of repeating wallpaper pattern behind it. This is product of India, the pip design, the green and the yellow, all right. So Tosin, I think you did an admirable job of eliminating what you, you, you had a rough start to begin with, but I think this is one of those things where sometimes the original packaging can weigh you down so heavily that you don't think of other things. The first thing that I think about is why didn't you pick a glass jar to show this? Most pickles I like to see. I wanna see what it's about. And especially if you're repositioning this as a higher end product to a different market, maybe more towards a Western market, it's a strange concept. We're not used to eating pickled mangoes. So I think we need to see this thing and there's a lot of mystery going on in this package as far as I'm concerned. I think if we just pulled away the mango thing, I would not even know it's a food product itself. And that's problematic. It could be a line of air fresheners. It could be lots of different things. Then we need to think about that. And I just don't know what else to do with this design. It feels like a lot of it is very digital and there's something that you can do to bring in, what, what can she do, Matthew? I had to ask a Filipino, Matthew and Sina, for his advice on this because Filipinos love their mangoes. Is that true, Matthew? Very true. Very true, so you guys are the mango experts and Matthew's telling me about how they're harvested, how they're packaged with the wood crates and how they're served and the many different ways you can eat mangoes and dishes. So really what this is missing, and it's a critical component of your design, is appetite appeal. This does not look appetizing to me. So if I'm cruising down the aisle way of a supermarket, I'm gonna look at this, I'm like, what is that? I'm moving on pretty quickly. So I think you could 
Considering the amount of real estate that you're using, you could really have reduced this down, maybe even made a half label and show me what's on the inside. So instead of just using a green swatch of color on the top, maybe that's an opportunity to use a photograph of a repeating, like a bunch of mangoes, like really beautiful mangoes, and, and just show what kind of mango this is, because apparently, depending on where the mango comes from, they look different and they taste different too. Um, it's just appetite appeal, right? So you've got patterns and textures and repeating ribbons around these things, around the circle. It's not really helping to create the feeling of something that's appetizing to me. Um, you weren't able to change the PIP logo. I do appreciate that you kept it there and it's integrated into the mark itself, but really it, it just, it's not doing anything special for me. Okay, I don't know what else to say. So that's, uh, that's how I'm gonna end it. And now it's time for me to score and then to tally up everybody's score and announce who I think won this challenge based on the five criteria we've defined. I think the very first thing I quickly realized working on this is that I need to find ways to be a more efficient designer. I found that as I was working, especially with the stuff I wasn't too comfortable with, like doing the pattern and what else? I was doing something else that I don't remember. Yeah, there were just a bunch of stuff I worked on during this that made me realize that I have a very inefficient approach. I'll explain this. So I found that I was doing a lot of repeated stuff that is there's probably easier ways to solve. Like when I was doing the pattern, I literally like duplicated it. Not each time, but like I literally went in and had to, there was just a way I went about it that I know for sure that there's easier ways around this thing. Like I've watched different people's videos, I've seen different people's processes, and I just know there's more efficient ways to do something. So that was one insight I gained into myself. Um, again, I I realized that there's more similarity similarities between Indian and Nigerian culture than I realized. So just working on this, something that felt so foreign at the beginning started to become more familiar to me. Okay, and then my third insight is that planning goes a long way in design. I find that I typically don't plan a lot before I start designing, but this time I was more conscious to think through the whole process from the beginning. There were a few surprises here and there, but just paying more attention at the planning phase definitely served me well. Um, and that's definitely something I learned in the course of this challenge. But wait. I have one more surprise in store for you. I'm going to bring back three people from Young Gun Season 1 to compete with the women from Season 2. Let's see what happens. Okay, so first up is Spencer. He's taking on a Korean food product. The product I chose is a microwavable dish called uh, bibimbap. It's a Korean dish and I picked it because the logo and the colors were really strong but I felt that the overall design could be vastly improved. So I felt like it had a lot of potential. Some challenges that I might have to address in this project are uh, one, the kind of multilingual aspect of it. Uh, I have the typeset in Korean, which is a language I'm unfamiliar with. Um, secondly, the target audience is, you know, kind of culturally something I'm, I'm not too uh, familiar with. So that's gonna be pretty hard to cater to. And lastly, I, I think that the fact that the packaging only has two sides to it means that the front panel kind of has to communicate a lot of things on a single panel. So I know that this design is definitely gonna be a challenge, but I am uh, quite confident that I can kind of pull through and um, you know come out with a really strong design in the end. So here's the original packaging, bibimbap, frozen cooked rice. Wow, that's, why would you want to buy frozen cooked rice when you could just buy rice normally? There must be something in here. This must be a pre-made meal. Oh, I see it's microwavable. So bibimbap is a Korean dish and it's got a bunch of vegetable things in it. It's usually served in a oven heated stone bowl. So when you eat this, it's super hot. And that's the whole idea behind it because it's apparently very cold in Korea. And so they have lots of warm and spicy foods. See that there's this little logo up here. Um, the, the, the logo, the original one that has a boy and I think he's like licking his lips and looking forward to eating something. And there is some branding here, I think, or some words in Korean. And then the American version is bibimbap and it tells you what it is. So the hierarchy is pretty clear here. You, you see this from a design point of view first, probably, or possibly this first. 
and then the frozen cooked rice as number three. Number three right there, okay. So it's a twin pack, I guess this makes two servings. Okay, let's take a look at what Spencer did, okay? He did a wonderful job, first of all, just looking at it in terms of reproducing the packaging, all with the, the highlights and the crunchiness of the original bag. So it looks like it's a straight swap out to take the original packaging and just update in design. My first impression of this is it actually looks really good and it looks very professional. It almost looks so professional that I'm not sure that he did anything. And it's only in contrast between looking at what he did, what was before and what he designed that you can actually see it. So probably gonna wanna see that side by side. Take a look at that. Okay, come back to this. So he's minimized the logo up here, which I think is a smart strategic play because he didn't want to be dominated by that. I think the hierarchy is right, that this is bibimbap and the Korean translation, which I assume what that is, is still intact. Frozen cooked rice, got it. Um, and smoky and spicy, I guess that's the flavor, or it's, I, don't, I don't know if there are other flavors of this. There's a lot of space here, a lot of negative space, and uh, the first thing I wanna tell you potentially is when you divide up your space, look at creating greater contrast between the two volumes. The first volume is all the yellow that's on top, the second volume is all the green at the bottom. So we see that there's space here. So my first instinct is to take this line and push it down. So bring it down to here. So that the contrast between the yellow volume and the green volume is, is a lot greater. You wanna shift those things. Um, if you wanna do four fifths, one fifth, if you wanna look for a quick rule, a rule of whatever in proportions, try that and see what happens. There's a lot of space there that you can do that. Um, I also think it's probably not necessary to leave the type on the right. I think you could easily put it over here. So smoky and spicy could live here. Uh, the twin pack and all the other directions can be here. I think it could be just organized here because we wanna eliminate unnecessary use of the space and I don't think it needs to be broken apart like that, keep frozen. So then that leads me to believe that I think you can hero up on the food product, the hero product shot. Um, it looks like he was able to repurpose that from the other one, but I don't know. Maybe he took a photograph of that. I also think that there's an opportunity here for you to break that line a little bit more significantly. I like how he's used the shadow here to cut into the green. It makes it look really dimensional. I think that's really good, especially if you're looking for that shelf presence that he talked about. I also thought that he could actually put the smoky part up here in that shadow too, so there's a differentiation in terms of the coloring instead of putting that on top. The last thing I was gonna say is he probably could have made the bowl a lot bigger. I don't know if it needs to be as small as he's made it. Because most of how we know what's inside, especially if this is being sold in the ethnic aisle, many people won't know what bibimbap is, and so the visual part of this the part that has all the appetite appeal is in the photograph of the product itself. And that's all I would do. And I like the integration of the patterns. I'm not sure what it means. Maybe it means something, maybe it doesn't, I don't, I don't know. Let's take a look at the other side now, because I, I believe he designed both sides. Pretty straightforward here, transferring of the nutrition facts here. I'm not sure in this mock-up if it's the case or not, but it looks like this type is a little bit extended here. I, I don't know why, it looks a little funny to me, but I'm sure it's fine. And here's another thing that you may consider doing, to think about how these elements line up. I was just thinking about how you can make the design overlap and make it feel much more dimensional. And there's some little tricks that you can do to do that. For example, if you were to make this label taller and have it live where it lives today, right? It can wrap around to the other side and that's what you wanna be able to do. You can also take maybe some of these other icons here. I don't know if it has to live there, but it would be nice to have some elements here that are kind of floating that aren't in boxes. The problem is you have a box, which is the package itself, and then you have two internal boxes in this label right here, and then this nutritional box. So it's getting really boxy, so we wanna like open it up somehow. Okay, let's take a look at the design just flat so we can appreciate it a little bit more. There's a visual trick that I like to do a lot, and I'm not saying that you need to, but a lot of times I like to play with cap lines and base lines, right? So if you were to drop this green bar down here, 
and just let it sit right on top. I think that could make for a really interesting visual element because then the green looks like it's on top and, and that could be kind of cool. You would probably match the same color, like the word spicy would be made up of the same color and texture here. And so it would feel like it's being stenciled on top. I, I generally like those kinds of things. Okay, overall very clean layout, super professional looking. You did a great job, Spencer. Thinking about, you know, any shelf item and even understanding like which one you picked and why is in, a, in itself helpful, but then getting to pull it apart and understand it and then try to improve upon it uh, helps you so much with really thinking about the function of a design. If I had any advice for season two newcomers, I would really just say uh, to just take big risks, uh, do stuff that's unexpected and have fun with it. I think that's the thing that really keeps uh, that kind of spark going and keeps you always wanting to just do more and more with it. Or oh, I'm sorry, Connor. Let's see what Connor's done. I went to a Asian supermarket in London uh, a couple of weeks ago and I found this can of mango nectar. I chose it because when we were in the store, this stood out completely because almost every other drink in the store was heavily branded, loads of packaging um, elements, loads of really bright type, loads of blown out illustrations and that one was ridiculously simplistic but fortunately there are very few design elements here to actually work with so it gives me much more room to play around with different colors and illustration maybe and we can take away all the unnecessary information and really strip this back i'm literally spending two days doing this that's all the time that i have to do it so this is like dawn of the first day get the recording done and we're going to go straight into making that design it's going to be a really intense process either way and yeah i'm excited to get started okay so let's take a look at the original package of what connor did Okay, so Foco, all right, there it is, Mango Nectar. This is clearly, clearly a product imported from another country because the way that it's designed, the packaging, and the colors, and the typography, clearly somebody has stretched the Mango Nectar typeface here. You can see that because these parts are thicker than the horizontals or the vertical strokes. And we know if you guys have been paying attention to the channel, usually the horizontal strokes have to be thinner than the vertical strokes. It's supposed to look something like this. So this dimension here almost always has to be thinner than this. Otherwise it feels optically thicker. So the fact that it's thicker there, it tells me that some designer who doesn't know what they're doing has stretched the mango nectar typeface. That's a definite no-no. That's a typography violation. That's a penalty of 10 yards right there. And there's an illustration of the mango and the leaf, okay? So this I think is ripe for a major redesign and let's see what he did. Mango nectar, mango nectar is interesting, okay. So he's got swatches of paint across it. Okay, let's see how this looks in context, but I need to compare that to the original again because it looks like he might have changed the logo. Mm -hmm. No? Okay, wow, all right. Mango nectar, this looks super clean. It feels like now a more Western product ready to be consumed by a Western market. I think he did a really good job here. It feels a little digital uh, with the way that the lines are drawn and even the paintbrushes feel digital to me. So I have some thoughts on this. I think the colors, the, the red and the orange, I think are a little bit contrasty, these two. And I think it would be nicer if the shades were a little similar in color to what I would think of as a mango. And um, I know mangoes have a variety of colors from yellow to deep orange, and some even have a little bit of that redness in it, but maybe it's the proportion of the two colors where I, I wanna see more orange because that's gonna tell me right away it's a mango as opposed to a tomato. There is something else also that, I'm not sure if you need to include the green here. Uh, I don't know why, the, the green, the red, and the white starts to remind me of Italian, and I don't think of Italian as the producers of really sweet, amazing mango. So Mango Nectar using Futura, one of my favorite typefaces. I think it's super clean, very nicely done. Again, very professional looking. Let's look at it front and back here. I think this is a great way to present your can as a mock-up here. So it's a white label, everything is super clear. I think the back, usually people ignore the back, 
and and that's where I think you can really have fun and try to do something with it. And I think it's consistent with what's going on in the front, but not a whole lot more. I like the topography that he's included on the side here, these uh, four columns. You don't see that happening a lot, and I think that's pretty clever. It makes for a very minimal and modern design. So I think he did a great job, um, barring the couple of comments that I had in terms of like associating with mango and making sure that the orange, the orange yellow color is more prominent in the design itself, but otherwise it looks really good. Mango nectar. Okay, excellent jobs. When I set out to do this rebrand for the can, for the Foco drink, I didn't really know what I was getting myself in for. I had two days at the most to do it. I think in total I spent about 10 hours on the project and it all just came from my gut instinct. It was all the first ideas that I had, I ran with them, iterated it on the go, almost broke my CPU and my computer in the process with all the layers, but we got there in the end. And that's something that I want to pass on as well to the girls who are doing season two now, is that sometimes you do just need to trust your gut. Sometimes you do need to trust your instinct and pick the first thing that you make. Now it won't be all the time, sometimes you have to back it up with research. But more often than not, you're gonna come and make your first idea, you're gonna go all the way around, and you're gonna come back to it. So don't dismiss your first idea as a bad one all the time. And secondly, you need to be proactive with your inspiration. If you're feeling frustrated or stuck on something, don't just sit and stare at your computer or your screen. Go and be proactive with it. Go outside, walk the dog, go to the gym, do some exercise, read a book. Because creative block is a myth. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. It's just a lack of perspective. So be proactive with finding that perspective and getting your inspiration, because it won't just come to you. Okay, let's get into, let's do a runes. Let's do a rune. So what I picked is um, this. It, it, it's called uh, feta cheese, a Greek feta cheese. Uh, I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce it. Feta or feta, I don't know. It's a traditional Greek cheese. And the reason why I picked this was because I also wanted to pick something which simple to redesign because I didn't want some to pick something which was very ambitious. And, uh, you know, I would kind of box myself considering that I don't really have a lot of time right now. So I picked this and... Um, this is just one label right now here. My main, my main, you can say goal would be to design it as like a very fancy imported product for Indian audience. When I looked at the packaging and I felt this is a traditional Greek cheese, I kind of immediately had an idea like, I really want to bring out the Greek part a lot. Make it feel like, you know, you're really tasting something or you're really consuming something which has come directly from greek mountains or like olympus or something you know something like that okay so let's take a look at what arun picked and he picked mousse that's pretty funny i think it says mousse formaggio uh, feta traditional greek cheese so it's clearly a greek product i think what lets me know of that is that certain blue color um, but I think Arun told us that it's actually an Indian product, just branded as a Greek product. So it's not actually even imported into the country, right? Which is a little suspicious. So there's issues of uh, authenticity. So the original packaging has a very simple logo. It's kind of cute. It's got a cow and this is mousse and fromage or formaggio or something like that. I can't really read it. And it's feta cheese, traditional Greek cheese, freshly crafted in India. So that might be an issue of importing cheese and that fresh cheese, I guess, they don't want to ship it, maybe. So they're not hiding it. It says freshly crafted in India right there. Premium and natural, okay. It's interesting because this package neither feels premium nor natural. A lot of plastic in here. Okay, let's take a look what he did. Okay, so here's his design for the container. Oh, well, this is really interesting because this is one of those sealed canisters that you peel off the top and you then can consume it. It's very interesting that he included photos of the product because I'm not sure what feta cheese looks like and it looks like these cubes and it looks very appetizing. He, in he included the Greek key element and I like that a lot. I know the Greeks watching this will say, you know, dude, it's so cliche to use that, but if it communicates 
that's what I'm interested in. And he, he didn't change um, the way that the logo is listed here. It is inherently a lot more legible using the yellow and the green. Um, I think that's consistent with the brand colors. And he just says feta, traditional Greek cheese. I think it's missing a lot of information from the front. So let's see how he handles this on the back. Okay, let's see here. Contains milk, ingredients, mousse. So this is where he's like packing everything else into it just to kind of resolve that. Maybe he invented the, the green color for the brand. Are we allowed to do that? No, you can't change brand Can't change brand colors? Okay. Well, I guess because the original logo is in white and putting on a different color background doesn't necessarily change that, but I think he did something more than just that. Let's go back to it. Yeah, so he changed the color of the logo and the background that lives on. And I think the reason why he did that was to make sure that it's legible because this blue color that he's using isn't dark enough for white to live off, especially in the fine detail. So I'm gonna give him a pass on that. And I think what he's doing is he's tying in these little sprigs of whatever that is. What is that? Do you know what that is? Some herbs or? Garnish. Uh, okay. So I guess he's tying in the color of the garnish with the label, which I think is smart, so that it doesn't feel too busy, that there are too many colors and things going on. I think the greenness, or the green color, I think the green adds a little fresh, freshness to it, and I think it's nice to have there. Very simple layout, centered, the Greek key, nothing wrong with this, it does also look very super professional. Um, nothing is jumping out at me that he needs to work on. Traditional Greek cheese, okay. Good job. Uh, but I, honestly, I, uh, I tried to incorporate all the feedback that Chris gave us in our first packaging assignment, which was Pharmaceutical Challenge uh, last year. And um, I, I, tried to, uh, I tried to ensure that, you know, I don't make the, repeat the same mistakes again. Now moving on to the advice to the Season 2 designers. Honestly, I, I, I think when it comes to this, I, I think I am the best one to do that because, you know, even though it is a competition, I don't think you should take it as a competition. I think this is a platform that the future team has provided us to learn, a direct access to Chris, a direct access to Matthew, and all the great people at Future, and you should take it as that. You shouldn't be so competitive that you drown in your own ego or, 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 or have pride about it. Out of the seven people you are, out of the six, uh, six other people that you might be competing with, uh, there are people who have who are at this level there are people at this level and like all everyone is at different levels but even then you are all at the same platform and uh, you have the same opportunity in terms of learning and you should take it as that i mean i was not the best performer in the season one and uh, i mean i was the last one but e e even then i learned so much it has it has basically changed a lot of things for me and um, even if you lose it doesn't matter you're here to learn and uh, keep learning and um, uh, don't don't kick yourself too much uh, it's it, it's I mean it, like one of the things that um, uh, it, that was said in the after hours chat you don't suck if someone else tells you to suck you suck the day you tell yourself you suck so don't tell yourself you suck and um, learn from the failures learn learn from every opportunity you get and uh, you'll definitely uh, benefit a lot from the series that's what the series is about it's about you learning other people watching you learn and them learning from your failures and uh, from your uh, uh, wins as well so yeah a uh, good luck to everyone on season two and thank you so much in terms of my review of the submissions from Young Gun Season 1, the boys, they all did an amazing job. I really have seen them grow and advance and the slickness of their packaging and their design concepts were really solid. I think for the most part, they all nailed it. They cleaned up the package and didn't overcomplicate it. Is there more to be designed here? Yes, and, and perhaps given more time, they could have come up with some really interesting and unexpected solutions for this. 
but going from the feta cheese to changing the container, I think that's a smart decision to make it feel more high-end versus just the vacuum sealed version. I think that's a really smart choice. I think the inclusion of photography, I don't know if that's stock or if you actually styled that, but it looks really good. It tells me what's inside. It looks a lot more appealing than just a block with no, no idea what's inside and just cleaning it up. So maybe for, for what we can learn from the guys is that less could be more, that you don't have to try to yell and put too much stuff in it. I think the can that's, um, that Connor designed for the mango drink looks really good. It feels really fresh and different. I can see that popping out on the aisles. Uh, just a little coloring issue there to make sure it communicates mango because you have like that one second for somebody to decide is this worth further investigation and I definitely don't like tomato juice but I do like mango juice okay and last but not least the frozen rice bibimbap I like how Spencer kind of stayed with original packaging and we can see what difference some design can make in terms of elevating it I think just choosing simpler typefaces organizing it to a tighter grid and minimizing the elements and how much clutter there is on this on the package itself really helped but you didn't come here to hear how they did you came here to understand who won the packaging design challenge for young gun season two without further ado my choice for the winner is anastasia with the basmati long grain white rice let me tell you why i picked it i picked it mostly because of the photography the illustration and how it draws your eye towards the rice it integrates a pattern which I assume to be kind of an Indian ethnic pattern and the colors really pop. I think the, the very smart combination of the blue and, and the two shades of blue and the white really make the package look really clean. I, I, I think she did an amazing job. So congratulations Anastasia. Looking forward to see what you do next. Okay, wow. I did not expect to win this challenge at all. In fact, I was sure I was not gonna win it because after watching the portfolio review, I felt really behind. I felt like other girls were a lot better than me. So having Chris acknowledge my work now, it feels really good and it feels very encouraging. But of course, the most important thing about this was to learn. And I know people always say that, but it's true in this case. I learned a lot about my design process and about some blind spots that I have in it and about things like shelf presence and how different colors send different messages, which I knew, I just didn't use it when, and I didn't think about it when I was designing the package. And more than anything, this shows me that I'm on the, that I'm on the right path and I just need to keep working on my craft, on my skills, and I will be just fine. So thank you, Chris, and thank you for coming up with this assignment. And I'm very excited to do future challenges. Thank you for making it all the way to the end of this video. I know it was lengthy. It was lengthy for us to record and probably even lengthier for you to watch. I hope you learned something valuable about the design process and what you need to do when you're upgrading and updating a brand. We also have seen pretty clear evidence that by changing the design, we can change the perceived value of something. This is for clients to hear and for you to communicate to your clients. I hope you enjoy this and if you feel so inclined, please take on this challenge yourself and go out and make something crazy cool. Do you agree with who I picked for the winner of this design challenge? Do you disagree? Who would you have picked to win this? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. See you guys on the next episode. I wanna give a big heartfelt thank you to Sony who supplied us with seven cameras, the A6400, which is a perfect camera for the kind of shooting that we're doing to the participants of this competition. So Sony, thank you very much. What's up everybody? This is Young Gun season two. I have no idea what episode this is, but it's jam packed with information. We're gonna be doing some coaching today. Welcome back, Young Guns. How's it going? Good. 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 Good.